While device settings is not one of the core settings you set up while you're creating your first campaign, it's still worthwhile talking about now because it's sort of along the same lines of all the different um, optimization techniques we've been talking about, like location targeting and hour of day targeting and rotation settings. It's worthwhile, I wanna take a pause and spend a few minutes talking about different devices and sort of how I perceive them. The big question is mobile. Mobile is increasing. Mobile already has more searches uh, daily, more clicks on ads than desktop, okay? That is a fact and it's been released by Google and that's something which really needs to be taken seriously. When I started in this business, mobile was was very, very small percentage of, of traffic. Really, it was like, do you even, like we would, we would launch campaigns not advertising on mobile, and then maybe we would add mobile in, and now it's totally changed. Desktop campaigns will still work better in a lot of businesses. We'll see conversion rates be higher on desktop, and that's just because sites are typically not as well optimized, and there's a lot that goes into that, and we'll talk about that, but each one of these device categories, desktop, tablet, and phone, need to all be taken seriously, need to all be strongly considered. So one way of, that I've seen, and we've done in the past, structuring campaigns and structuring ad groups, is by structuring them by device. We actually took over um, an account a few months ago, spending a ton of money. They had their campaigns and ad groups broken out by device types. So they had ad groups for this uh, product category, for tablet, only tablet, this product category, only phones, this product category, only desktop. And you could do that in Google Ads. You could specify a negative 100% bid adjustment for any of these device categories. Um, and that's something which is really interesting because you need to be able to look at your data and figure that out. But first, let's go and answer some questions. Should you advertise on mobile? So the number, number one question you need to answer is, is your site mobile optimized? If you don't have a mobile site, then, then you really shouldn't be advertising on mobile. You're gonna be penalized by Google. You're gonna have a very, very high cost per click. So if you don't have a mobile site or a mobile landing page, then forget mobile, just forget it. Just send it to desktop. And we have a bunch of clients that actually sell, you know, uh, custom clothing and things like that, and, and they don't have a mobile interface. They do a huge amount of business, but they do it through their desktop and that's fine. You don't have to. Then also think about where are your customers typically when they search for your products or services. Think about that from that perspective, from your customer's perspective. Are they on the couch? Um, is it something that they're gonna be on the road when they're searching and they're, they're likely to be on mobile? Um, that just sort of putting yourself in your customer's shoes, if you were going to buy the products and services that you sell, where would you typically be? Would it be equally as likely to be on desktop as you are on mobile or a tablet? Then fine, then you should be advertising on all devices. But more and more the answer to that question is it's very possible that my customers are searching for me on mobile because consumers are now making much more sophisticated, complicated buying decisions and going through more lengthy, complex buying funnels and buyer's journeys. We'll talk about the buyer journey um, in a following section on mobile devices. And talking about the buyer's journey, what does your buyer's journey look like? Um, are people making decisions very quickly with one touch point? Do people interact with your brand multiple times before they make a decision? Is there a combination of going to see your products in person or meeting you in person? Will they be looking for directions, right? Are they gonna be looking for you or interacting with you on mobile? Um, the other question that I'm sort of moving away from is can you spend your budget on desktop alone? So in most cases, this advice is still true that if you can spend your budget on desktop alone, then you should spend it on desktop alone because we'll, you'll typically see higher conversion rates. You'll see lower costs per click on desktop. But budget in my mind is really a malleable thing, right? If you're hitting your profitability targets, your budget should be increasing. That's really how it should go. It's very rare where like, you approach somebody or, or you have this attitude that, oh, no matter how much money I generate, I'm not willing to spend more. So if you do have a, a limited amount of money that you're willing to spend, regardless of how profitable you are, then try to spend that on desktop first. And then to get a really good sense of this, take a look at what your competitors are doing. We're gonna show you how to use SEMrush and other research and analysis software that we use to take a look at what competitors are doing, where they're spending, researching their advertising footprint, seeing where they're getting the bulk of their traffic from, what devices and networks their ads are appearing on, and looking at what your top three, four competitors are doing, where they're showing their ads, could give you a really good indication of where you should be playing as well. Um, and the last thing to remember is attention spans are much shorter on mobile compared to desktop, and that could be a symptom and also an effect of the, of the device because sometimes we're just in a mobile context and when we're on our mobile phones, we're typically more in a rush, on the road, driving, walking, running, whatever it may be. And on a desktop computer, we're typically either at work and we have all the time in the world to, to buy random crap online, uh, we all know how that goes, or we're home and we're working and we're in a more stable set um, 
uh, environment. Let me address tablets real quickly. So what's the deal with tablets? Now this chart you're looking at on the right hand side is actual real data that was pulled from millions, and I mean millions, I mean literally millions of clicks from the accounts that Adventure Media manages. Um, and we're managing millions of dollars of, of ad spend. So on the right hand side is conversion rate. On the left hand side is your average cost per click. Okay, this was obviously taken from accounts. We, we took out accounts that didn't have conversion tracking set up properly, et cetera. And we're seeing this interesting trend when it comes to conversion rates. So conversion rates, when it comes to computers, computers have the highest conversion rate. Then mobile devices have a conversion rate sort of below that. And then tablets are even below mobile devices. Tablets have the worst conversion rate, but you don't see that same trend with cost per click. You would expect to see the same trend with cost per click. Computers have the highest cost per click when we did this. Now we're seeing uh, mobile devices actually have higher mobile traffic being more expensive and that's we're seeing a lot more variability with that. The mobile devices from the data set that we're pulling has a lower CPC and then tablet actually has a higher CPC than mobile devices, although it has a lower conversion rate. So we're seeing this inverse relationship between um, CPC and conversion rate, which is strange. So what's going on with tablets? Um, again, this was done with hundreds of client accounts, over 4 million clicks, and you see the steep decline in conversion rate from desktop phones to tablets. With phones, we can understand they're small devices, they're difficult to navigate, your thumbs are, are sometimes large and you can't click that button, but what's the deal with tablets? Um, why are tablets performing so poorly? And this is something we've seen over hundreds and hundreds of accounts. So my advice would be don't bid on tablets to begin with especially if you have a limited budget, right? If you're not going aggressive, you don't have research and development budget, I would knock out tablets. That is my advice to you, my student. Um, put a negative, and I'm gonna show you how to do that in a moment, put a negative 100% bid adjustment on tablets to start off with. Um, to explain why this is happening, I think tablets have a bit of an identity crisis. Responsive design, in my opinion, is the culprit here. Uh, for those of you who may not be familiar, responsive design refers to a design framework where you design a website or a landing page for a desktop device and as you get narrower and narrower, as the browser plane narrows, the content reformats and resizes, right? We've all seen that happen. We've all been on sites where that's happened. And most of your web, you know, your Squarespace and your, your WordPress sites are going to be responsive, responsive templates. It's, it's, it's very common. Um, but the problem is the breakpoints, which is the the widths of the browsers where content, content reformats and designers themselves focus on desktops and they focus on phones. There's this gray area, there's this abyss between an iPhone and a desktop where designers and template designers ignore and that's called tablets. You always have this weird, weird layout. You have these large backgrounds with tiny little bits of text on wide iPads where it's like formatted for a phone and then you have text on top of each other because it didn't reformat properly because it's a little bit narrower than a desktop. And I think that bad user experience is the number one reason for suffering conversion rates by device. I don't see how there's a specific difference in the attitude of somebody or the personality of somebody using a tablet versus using a phone versus using a desktop. Not, not such a difference where it should account for these numbers so consistently across so many clicks and so many accounts. But I've seen such poor experiences on tablets and it makes sense that people are just not comfortable using sites. Websites are now getting really good on phones and they're really good on computers. They're just not good to use and not fun to use and not enjoyable to use or easy to find the information on tablets. I believe that tablet traffics will and should get better as more brands redefine their responsive experiences. So as um, you, as designers are more cognizant of mobile traffic and tablet traffic, then, then tablet traffic will likely increase in profitability and the conversion rates will probably increase as well. I want to show you a couple um, interesting tools There's that I like, mobiletest.me and BrowserStack. These are really great tools for testing how well your site content shows up on different devices. So let's jump into mobiletest.me over here and I could choose the free version, I could choose any of these different um, these devices and of course they're giving me all these old devices if I chose a newer device I, I, I could sign up for a, a, a very very affordable paid program to test newer devices but say I'm going to test the HTC one which is like probably similar to an iPhone 6 or even an iPhone 10 or whatever I could choose one of these websites the New Yorker let's say to see how it looks and 
it shows me that specific device and I can scroll how it looks. The New Yorker looks great. So let's say I did our site, adventureppc.com, and I clicked enter. So it shows me exactly how adventureppc.com looks on a mobile device. And it looks fantastic, you know, nice, nice and mobile optimized. If I choose options, I could turn this into landscape, let's say, and I could see how the website looks on an, in a landscape format, right? It looks really good. Um, and I could also change my device. So I could change, I want to see, let's say, on, on an, an iPad mini in landscape, or I might want to see how, and this is, if you have a website and you're in charge of website, this is a great tool um, to use to diagnose any potential issues. Um, we spent a huge amount of time and effort designing the site for each breakpoint, so it's a really good experience. Um, we have good conversion rates across all devices, but most sites will see a large degree of variability. There's another uh, website which is great called Browser Stack. This is a little bit more of a full service infrastructure for testing. Um, I would recommend signing up for the free trial. You could, again, you could sign up and you could actually use your website, use your web app in different environments. It's, it's really, really neat. It's, it's more expensive. It's, it's more of an enterprise sort of solution. If you take a look at pricing, I mean, it's not crazy. It's, it's $29 a month, it's, but it's, it's an actual software and there's a lot more that you could do. You could test different things live. You could do speed tests. Um, you could test all different types of environments, different operating systems, meaning I'm on a Mac, but I could test how my site would operate in Windows um, through browser stack. It's really neat, through all different types of browsers, something worth checking out if you're interested in that sort of thing. But at the very least, you should be testing how your site performs on something like mobiletest.me. Going back into a live Google Ads account, we can go and select devices under ad schedule and we can see exactly where we have these device uh, bid adjustments set up. So in this campaign, we actually are advertising on tablets, but as you could see, the tablet conversion rate is um, lower, but the cost per conversion in our example, $42 for this specific client is acceptable to us. But if I wanted to knock out tablets, I would navigate to devices under the campaign that I'm in, and I would click edit, and I would decrease. I would click edit, and I would click de decrease, and I would decrease my tablet bid by 100%, which means now I will start getting zero traffic on tablets. If I want to remove that, I edit and I leave it blank and I click save and now I don't have any more um, bid adjustment for tablets. So these are the three categories. They don't ever change, mobile, mobile phones, computers, tablets. For this client, we have a 15% bid adjustment increase for mobile phones and a 35% bid decrease for desktop computers. And if Ken, that wasn't arbitrary. We ran the campaign straight. We, did, we, we started off running on tablets, computers, and mobile phones without any bit adjustments. And then over time we saw that mobile phones were performing so much better and computers were a little bit more expensive and weren't performing as well. So we had to decrease our bids quite significantly on computers, increase them significantly on mobile phones. And you can see that reflected in the data here. Our click the rate on mobile phones are much better. Our average CPC is starting to even out, but computers are still a little bit more expensive. Um, we get a lot more conversions on mobile and our conversion rate is actually also better on mobile phones than it is computers. So all the data corroborates why we went and our cost per conversion was $2 more expensive and that corroborates why we ended up creating a negative 35% bid adjustments. Again, for this campaign, another campaign, even if it's a similar product, it might have a different location targeting setting, it might be advertising a slightly different service or a different landing page, we might see different results and we don't have a negative 35% bid adjustment on computers or we have an opposite. Maybe in another campaign for this client, we have a bid decrease for mobile and a bid increase for computers, but that's not so common. Usually you'll get, for your business and the services that you're in and the, the, the the niche that you operate in, you'll typically see, you'll start getting, you'll start, you'll start seeing a good pattern for tablets, computers, mobile phones, how they operate. And again, to create those bid adjustments, you go over to devices. It used to be that you created your bid adjustments and you, your bid settings at the campaign creation level where we're at um, in, the, in the course. Um, but Google removed that, but I still thought it was worthwhile to, to at least introduce my thoughts on tablets, my thoughts showing you some interesting analysis, my thoughts on, on bid adjustments in general. And again, it's not binary. It's the same thing as location targeting. It's not either I'm advertising on tablets or I'm not. I could have a negative 20% bid adjustment, right? Use as much of what you could use to your advantage. Advertise in as many places as possible. Advertise on as many devices. Just use your bid adjustments to make that as profitable as possible without having to necessarily totally cut out a location or a time of the day or a device category. So the only time I am gonna to stick to my guns and say it's binary is the display network, right? Remember way back in the beginning, we said we're not gonna advertise in the display network at all. Stick with that. Do not add display network to your campaigns, even the search partner network. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not. But 
that's that. In the next lecture, we're going to briefly talk about um, tracking templates and custom URL parameters. It's going to be really quick because it's not so relevant to us right now. And I will see you guys.